For us, you know, we have a long, long uh, relationship. Which one? Long relationship with our Russian fans. You know, we, we come here to Russia to play for our fans. And uh, of course, the same goes for so many places around the world. We just kicked off the tour in China, you know, and uh, now we are back in Russia. And, uh, you know, this is a world tour. And uh, at some point, we might go back to the, uh, go back to the Ukraine as well. You know, because we have so many fans in Ukraine also, you know. So, music is music and politics is politics. Uh, we are here, you know, to, we live in the world of emotions, you know. Playing our songs, have the, the, the fans to sing along. We come with a whole new production, uh, with uh, many new songs we, we haven't played before from the new album and, and some vintage stuff from the 70s since we're celebrating 50th anniversary you know so uh, it feels great to be back in russia you know and uh, it's like when you play in the middle east i think it's a good example you know we're very popular in israel but we also play shows in lebanon where the people and the fans love our music as well so music it's about emotions, music is about bringing people together in a positive way, and that's why we're here to play for our fans. Thank you. Moscow 24, uh, why did you choose uh, these cities? Why before, uh, without uh, Sochi, for example, and Sevastopol? It's basically not us uh, choosing the cities. It's uh, our promoter here in Russia. We work with them for a long time, SAV, uh, and uh, we work with them for many years. And they come up with a proposal and uh, recommend the cities they want uh, the band to perform, and uh, and we agree to that. And it's many places we do on this uh, trip uh, we played before. There are a few cities we haven't been before. Uh, but most of them <clears throat> we've been through a few times, you know, and uh, it feels great. It's, Russia is such a big country and, uh, of course, uh, we know that we're, we're just playing, still playing a part of it and uh, we, uh, we're missing probably uh, all the way from Krasnoyarsk to Vladivostok, but we've been there before. And you never know, maybe we come back to that part of the country at some later point, you know. But for now, it's a great tour, we're excited to be back, and uh, we're ready to rock. So what about you, Russia? What was the most complicated thing? Uh, it wasn't that complicated. <clears throat> the maybe most complicated part was at the very end to choose the right songs because we had a large selection we recorded in 19 songs for this project and uh, to narrow it down to like 12 or 14 that might have been the hardest part. Otherwise recording we had a lot of fun. Uh, digging out some great riffs and ideas from the 80s, 90s, and recent years, and plus writing new material, 
in coming up with an album that reflects uh, like the Scorpions classic sounds uh, done in a modern way and uh, we had you know with our great team of Swedish producers we had a fantastic time in the studio and we are very happy to present this great new album uh, to our 50th anniversary tour. Этот тур у них юбилейный, и, опять же, объявлен, что заключительный, прощальный. Насколько я знаю, что это не первый прощальный тур, вот почему так много прощальных туров? Well, it's your anniversary tour, and it was announced that it's your farewell tour. Uh, it's not the first time that it's announced as a farewell tour, so we'll be time it will be really a farewell tour. And in the album title it says, Return to Forever. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That uh, gives you an indication that we, we really thought seriously it would be um, a farewell tour the last time we came around, but we realized we just have still too much fun uh, and we, we just cannot leave the stage at the moment and we don't want to announce a particular amount because first of all we don't know and uh, secondly um, as I said it's too much fun so the title Return to Forever indicates a little bit it might go on for a bit. <laughs> In every Russian concert, you try to speak Russian, and who is your teacher, and uh, do you prepare some surprises for Russian fans? For example, um, you've been in a concert, uh, Paul McCartney in Moscow, I see you, yeah. And uh, Sir Paul McCartney is uh, welcome to Russian fans, Privet Chuvaki, hi guys. Do you prepare some interesting for Russian fans? Of course. I mean, that's what I do every night, wherever we go. And uh, with, with some of those phrases I'm familiar with, uh, even in Russia, but uh, there's still uh, a good part to learn, you know, and every other night, and uh, maybe surprise the fans by something new. And uh, yeah, hopefully we, we find some good teachers along the way. <laughs> I'm sure we will. And some question about Moscow, because our channel about Moscow. What is your favorite places in Moscow uh, with uh, no red square and other places? Maybe Gorky Park? I think Moscow City is pretty cool. You know? That's what. I mean, I don't know what you. I, I mean, those skyscrapers? Doesn't it call it Moscow City? Uh, the favorite place is your favorite place. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, this uh, new growing part in Moscow, ah, okay. with all those uh, high buildings. Uh, doesn't it call it Moscow City? Yes, it is. Yeah, it, is. Yeah. it is, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what I think. It's it's very attractive when uh, you go through the uh, in, at night, you know, and you see the skyscrapers touching the clouds. You know, I think it's pretty cool. It's it's a whole new part of Moscow growing up and when you talk Red Square or like uh, the Russian culture and this is like the modern Russia, you know, with all those amazing buildings, great architecture and stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, <coughs> impressive. You like modern Moscow? Yeah, I, I like the, the old uh, uh, culture and the old uh, Moscow and of course uh, but when you see that the new Russia is growing there, like in so many other cities as well. A few years ago when we played first time Ekaterinburg, for example, you know, for every visitor who comes there for the first time, being so far east at the Ural Mountains, and then you see, wow, such a modern city. And uh, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, the question to James, why do you have these tattoos, uh, like based on your both hands? James, why you have the tattoos? tattoos on uh, it gives me strength, it gives me power, and that's what yeah. this is all about. Oh. And and it, it's also from the traditional Gibson guitar strap. We <laughs> 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 just got to take it. Yeah. And it gives me strength and power. Uh, Talking about guitar straps, uh, you know that uh, Scorpions is five musicians and uh, we lost Rudolf on the way, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but he's, he's, he's just on the way. next flight. Maybe 
Some of you would like to show your tattoos as well? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. I couldn't show you. Are you planning, any of you planning to make tattoos for yourself, make new tattoos, maybe? I mean, all of our dreams come true when we watch James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got, you got some tattoos. Yeah, I'll show them at the live show. Yeah. Okay, no, try it. По поводу песни Wind of Change, думаю, всем известно, что эта песня стала классической на школьных и детско-лагерных дискотеках. Последние, под какие песни танцевали медленные композиции гости и что стало с теми девушками? You may have heard that the, the song Wind of Change is very popular in Russia, especially you know during the evenings in schools and in vacation camps, where it's the last song, it's the uh, slow dance song where uh, mm -hmm. boys are dancing with the girls. So um, maybe you remember from your childhood or some, from your youth about some songs where, that you were dancing slow dances. Of course, of course. Yeah. Beatles, hey Jude. Yeah, it and, was uh, a long version. Very a long version, yeah. <laughs> and Sunny and Chair, I got you, babe. Ah, ah. see? Stay ready, Evan. What's up, Yeah. Okay. It wasn't the best dance song. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, we've been to a school like a couple of years ago here in Russia where the children, the, the students, were singing for us. Mm -hmm. have changed. Yeah. Actually, there was some Volvo grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was beautiful, you know, to hear Russian Russian kids singing for a German band the song with English lyrics. Yeah, yeah. It was wonderful. And еще один вопрос касаемо работы с Мстиславом Ростроповичем. Um, you had a, uh, you worked with um, Maestro Rostropovich mm -hmm. here, so do you remember some special I don't know history story about this? What was how was the work with him? Well, first of all, we felt very honored to work with uh, Maestro Rostropovich, and he was such a cool guy. You know, he was a legendary artist, of course. But on the personal side, uh, I remember him after our performance at the Brandenburg Gate when we played with 160 cellists and we played and performed Wind of Change and uh, Rostropovich was conducting and, and after that we, we, we went for a drink and a little uh, small talk and stuff and, and he said, Klaus, you can, you can call me Slava, I'm Slava <laughs> and I'm very close to like I love artists from like from pop and rock music like Sting, you know, and he used to work with many many artists from from the world of rock music together, and so he was very cool, you know. He was like, yes, right on, Slava, <laughs> and uh, and he was a wonderful person, and it was an honor to work with him. Thank you. And the question about Wind of Change, uh, and you have called uh, that that cat. Zeitgeist of uh, the end of uh, 80s, and now in Russia and Moscow another process. Uh, what uh, you can say about this, and can you write some songs maybe about the process in modern Russian and modern? You know, the, the background for Wind of Change was the fact that we grew up as a post-war generation in Germany, and we lived. Uh, not too close, not too far away from the Berlin Wall. We lived in in this divided city, divided country, the Berlin Wall, all that. And being a German band, where like our parents' generation uh, went to war, and maybe some of them even in Russia, you know. So coming to Russia in the late 80s, uh, we were just amazed that, that how friendly uh, the Russian fans. Uh, they received us being a German band, you know, and uh, because of that history, we felt we were very sensitive <coughs> about it, and uh, it was just an amazing moment in our in our own band history, you know. And uh, when we played those ten shows in Leningrad in '88, and one year later the Moscow Music Peace Festival, so it was very touching, very moving, and um, so that was the inspiration for Wind of Change. I mean, 
in Moscow, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Bon Jovi, everybody uh, rocked the stage at Lenin Stadium, but they went home like, we rocked the Soviet Union, you know? For us, it was much deeper, much more emotional. And uh, that's why uh, that song came out about. You know, so today it's a different world. It's 25 years later, and of course, you know, Wind of Change is even after all these years is still a very relevant song. You know, and uh, the world is going through a lot of changes. You know, but all we are hoping for, for us and for the next generations to follow, that we all live together in a peaceful world. В рамках одного из турне российского вам подарили матрешку. Что бы вы хотели, чтобы вам подарили сейчас? И вообще, что планируете увезти из России? Какие сувениры? For one of your tours in Russia, you you got matryoshka. You know this doll, traditional Russian doll, as a present. So this doll, what are you planning? What are you planning to get as a gift from your Russian fans? And what are you planning? What souvenirs? Yeah. Cool. What souvenirs are you planning to get from here, from Russia? We don't know. We have no idea what to expect, but we usually get a lot of gifts, and uh, and it's great that sometimes um, the fans are uh, expecting us at the airport when we arrive, and they're singing songs, and uh, they have they have flowers, they have cake, they have matryoshkas. It is uh, it is very touching since. Um, you know, it shows you that the fans are spending like so much energy on, on expecting the best, preparing little things, you know, handmade stuff. It's just lovely. <laughs> Tell us about uh, when you are not on stage, not on tour, how you spend your free time in your daily life? Maybe you have some habits, good or maybe bad. Can you tell us about that? It's a question for all of we you. We wouldn't tell you about the bad. <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, the fact is, we're, we're very busy of things. And uh, <clears throat> to do a tour like this, and to go all over the world playing concerts, it means a lot of preparation. And so there are many meetings and many, many things about a whole new production about the show. And uh, so it's like once we're out of the studio, when we finish the recording of a new album, so we go into the whole promotion thing from our label, Sony Music. They want us to do interviews like hell from the morning <laughs> till the evening with, with half, half the world. Uh, it's it's a lot of work to prepare or to support a new album, the release of a new record like Return to Forever, and then uh, go on the road again. And you want to show and present our audience, our fans, something new, something different. So, and uh, we're very loyal fans, especially in Russia. They're very loyal and they deserve a great new concert, you know, and that takes a lot of time for preparation and that's what we're basically doing. And uh, there's very little time for vacations and, and other things. I mean, you meet some friends, go for nice dinners with your friends and of course, uh, but it, it's, uh, it takes a lot of time to prepare something like what we're doing now. Maybe some sports and nice. Yeah. Some what? Sports. sports. Sport, I mean, running up and down the stairs is just about uh, everything we can do at the moment. Tell us right about the preparation. We also have, this hasn't been mentioned, we have like simultaneously to the release of the album a movie about the Scorpions. Yeah, it's 50 years anniversary, so it's like a, a very interesting documentary and you might see it one day. It's, it was shown in cinemas in Europe. It will be released as a DVD later. And so that also took time, and um, yeah, we are busy boys. But uh, I support my soccer team, Hanover uh, 96. <laughs> they, need, they need it. They, they need it, they need it, you know, because, uh, yeah, they, they need it. Season is almost done, you know, and we hope and, and pray they stay in the first league, you know. So tonight is Bayern Munich, uh, Champions League. Barcelona Champions League, you know, and by the time we get to no busy best tonight. I hope because of time change, you at least can see the second half or something. Uh, so we have to go now. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to go. <laughs>
I love soccer and uh, and of course in my leisure time I try to support my team. Thanks. Thanks. Последний вопрос, Uh, yeah, we have um, we are presenting songs from the brand new album, um, Return to Forever, like the opening song, uh, going off with the bang, we have the first single, we built this house on the rock, we have Eye of the Storm, and we have also songs that are reminiscent of the 70s, because this is also about the 50 years anniversary, so therefore we have like a nice medley of 70s songs. And we play songs which we haven't played in a long time, but of course we play all the, the big songs, the classics, because the fans would be disappointed if we wouldn't, so therefore it is a very nice mix of songs. and. Uh, we have three shows in three different countries now. Uh, we played like in China last week. We played in Czechia and Poland just the day before yesterday. And so this is like the fourth show in the fourth country. And um, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.